Okay, in this video, we're gonna look at this fairly complicated triple integral. So it's an iterated integral um, to start off with. So the outermost integral is with respect to y, it goes from zero to two. The middle integral is with respect to x, it goes from zero to the square root of four minus y squared. And the innermost integral is with respect to z, and it goes to the square root of the quantity three times x squared plus y squared, and then the square root of 16 minus x squared minus y squared. So the strategy here is we're going to draw a picture of what this region represents and then convert it to spherical coordinates and then evaluate the integral that way. Okay, so let's notice that we have z going from this curve down here, so I'm going to write it in this, in this way. So z is bigger than or equal to the square root of 3 times x squared plus y squared and then it is less than or equal to the square root of 16 minus x squared minus y squared. So it might be useful to look at those two bounding curves real quick. So let's look at this first bounding curve which is given by our first inequality and I should say surface here. So that is the surface given by z equals the square root of the quantity 3 times x squared plus y squared. Okay, great. And now here's how I like to think about this. I like to cover up one variable at a time and see what kind of curve I get. So if I cover up the variable y, notice I get z equals essentially the square root of x squared. I know I have a 3 in there, but that doesn't really change anything. And the square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. And so what that tells me is in the x, z axis, this thing looks essentially like the absolute value of x. And then I do the same thing for the other variable, so I'll cover up x squared, and notice that I'll get z equals the absolute value of y, so I can maybe put the y, z axis kind of in the same place. So that means this is opening like an absolute value function in both directions. And then after that, what I can think about is setting z equal to a constant, and notice we get something that's essentially a circle. Okay, good. So what that tells us is that if we're making our picture here, our bottom surface is something that is flat on the sides but opens circularly. In other words, it's a cone. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that. So we've got this cone opening like this. So that is our cone given by this uh, surface right here. Okay, good. Now let's zoom in on this upper bounding surface. So that's z is less than or equal to the square root of 16 minus x squared minus y squared. And so now if we look at what that is, that's z equals the square root of 16 minus x squared minus y squared. Um, but notice we can square both sides of this. We get z squared equals 16 minus x squared minus y squared, which tells us that uh, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 16. In other words, that's a sphere of radius 4. But it's not exactly a sphere of radius 4 because way back here at the beginning, we only have a plus inside of, in front of the square root. So this is actually the top half of a sphere of radius 4. So we can draw this in the following way. So we'll draw like our little sphere of radius 4 like this. Now notice those are going to intersect at that point. And so the entire picture that we want is given by uh, this bit right here. So here we have this cone, which is going up and intersecting with this sphere of radius four, and then we get this thing in the top. So we have some sort of ice cream cone type figure. Okay, so that's what's happening with uh, the z values. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the board and see what's happening with the x values. Notice we need to take care of the x values as well. Okay, so now let's see what's happening with the x values. So notice that our x values are bound between 0 and the square root of 4 minus y squared. 
Okay, great. Well, obviously x equals zero is the y-axis, so that's not too hard to figure out. So let's look at this um, inequality on the top. In other words, the upper bounding curve. So that gives us x equals the square root of four minus y squared. Again, we can like square both sides, and that's going to give us um, x squared equals four minus y squared, which is x squared plus y squared equals four. And notice that is a circle of radius 2. So if we go down here in the x, y plane, we know our region is going to be given by a circle of radius 2. But it's not the entire circle of radius 2. It's only the circle of radius 2 that is to the right of the y axis because notice our x value has to be positive. So that's what we're given here. Good. And so now what we can do is start to uh, look at what the y value is telling us to do, and then we can restrict all of our pictures. So notice the y values, which are given by this outer bit of the integration. So we'll look at those last. So notice y goes from 0 to 2. So what that tells us is that we're actually only interested in what's happening here in the first quadrant. Great, so in like previous language, we would have called this D, so this is the region in the XY plane that we're interested in. And so notice it's a quarter of a circle in the first quadrant, and that's a circle of radius two. Now the next thing that we can notice is that uh, what we really want is the region of this cone that is above this uh, quarter circle. So let's see if we can uh, draw that in. So here we'll draw this quarter circle down here. So notice that goes through the points along the x and the y axis at 2. And this is our quarter circle, um, which I'm going to go ahead and call D. And we're only interested in the cone above that. So how you can visualize this, I'm not going to try to cut the cone by drawing a picture, but how you can visualize this is you have a really, really, really frozen ice cream cone, so frozen that you can cut through it and it won't like uh, collapse into pieces, and you cut that cone into quarters, and we're taking a quarter of that cone. Okay, great. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up the board, and then we can write this region in terms of spherical coordinates. Okay, so now we're ready to write this in terms of spherical coordinates. So notice that we can most easily maybe see what our angle theta is. So notice that our angle theta is going to go from the positive x-axis to the positive y-axis, and that works with the picture that we had drawn earlier. So let's just go ahead and write that first. So theta is going to go between 0 and pi over 2, because that's the positive x-axis and the positive y-axis. Okay, good. Now let's see what rho will do. So now rho is going to go between zero and this outer sphere because we want to think about being inside this ice cream cone. So if you're inside this ice cream cone, you are a distance from the origin that is a minimum of zero, so you could be at the origin, and a maximum of this outer sphere. But remember, this outer sphere had an equation which we knew. This was x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 16. That's a sphere of radius 4, so that means my largest value for rho is 4. Okay, great. Now the next thing we want to do is figure out our uh, values for phi. So let's recall that we measure phi from the positive z axis, so we want to start up here and measure it down. So the smallest phi can be is 0 because we do include the positive z axis. And then the largest phi can be is along this cone. And now this cone is, again, defined by this equation, z equals the square root of 3 times x squared plus y squared. And so I'll write that equation of a cone in rectangular coordinates again, just because we'll use this in order to find this angle. Okay, so now let's go over here to our change of coordinates. And notice that z is equal to rho cosine phi. So we can write this as rho cosine phi here. 
And then X and Y are rho cosine theta sine phi and rho sine theta sine phi. So it's not too hard to see that those add up to three times rho squared times sine squared phi, like that. Okay, great. But now notice we can take the square root there and we'll get the square root of three times rho times sine of phi. So we've got this nice equation that we can use to solve for uh, phi. Notice that rho is gonna cancel on both sides like that. And then we can maybe like uh, divide cosine on both sides and the square root of three on both sides. And let's see, that's going to give us tangent of phi equals uh, one over the square root of three. Okay, good. Now let's see if we can recall when tangent of phi is equal to one over the square root of three. Okay, now uh, you can just look this up in a trig chart, but the tangent of phi is equal to the square root of one over the square root of three when phi is equal to pi over six. So that means phi here is going to go from zero to pi over six. So that gives us our bounds of integration. Okay, good. Now, uh, one more thing to notice before we erase the board and do the calculation is that this function that we're integrating here, x squared plus y squared plus z squared, is actually equal to uh, rho squared given this change of variables that we're about to do here. Okay, great. So I'm going to clean up the board and then we will start putting this all together. Okay, so just to reiterate where we were, we took this integral that was a triple integral in rectangular coordinates, we looked at what that region looked like in three space, and then we uh, rewrote that region in terms of spherical coordinates, and now we're ready to change the whole integral over into spherical coordinates. And uh, this is how we're gonna do this. We'll think of this as like our dv thing, so this dz dx dy, and then um, we can do the following. So here maybe let's do the uh, row integral on the outside, so we have 0 to 4, and then we'll do our theta integral, so that's going to be 0 to pi over 2, and then we'll do our phi integral, which is 0 to pi over 6. Okay, good. And then notice our function becomes rho squared. Great, and then our dv component becomes rho squared sine phi. So we have another rho squared times sine phi. Great, and now we need to put our d rho d theta d phi in whichever order is appropriate here. And here we have d phi on the inside, and then d theta, and then d rho. But the good thing about this, which is actually pretty common for spherical coordinates, is that this is a product of a function of rho and phi, and so we can separate this into three integrals. So we can separate this into the rho integral, so that's going to be 0 to 4 rho to the fourth d rho, where I multiplied those two. And then it'll be that multiplied, the integral from 0 to pi by 2 d theta, Great. And then finally, the integral from 0 to pi over 6 of sine of phi d phi. Okay, fantastic. But now we just have two kind of end of calculus 1 integrals to do. I should say three end of calculus 1 integrals to do. So notice uh, this is going to give us uh, 1 fifth rho to the fifth um, evaluated from 0 to 5. Great. This is just going to give us pi over 2. There's nothing to do there. And this is going to give us a negative cosine phi evaluated from 0 to pi over 6. Okay. So, but what I like to do here is change this negative to a positive and then change the order of uh, evaluation. That goes, so that goes from 0 on the top to pi over 6 on the bottom. Okay, so let's see what we get. We're going to get, uh, let's see, this should be four. So we have four to the fifth power. Okay, so we're gonna have four to the fifth power. So I believe that's 2048. So this is gonna give us 2048 over five. And then we're gonna have that multiplied by pi over two. 
And then finally, that's going to be multiplied by cosine of zero, which is one, minus cosine of pi over six, which is one half. Great. So we get something like that, but it's easy to see that this is equal to one half. And so uh, that'll give us a quarter on the bottom, which is going to give us uh, 512 pi over 5. Good. And that's a good place to stop.